Hello, people. It's Chris Angel coming at you for another episode of Marketing for the Rest of Us. And uh, just got done with two days at an event called Show Up Live. What an amazing event. Shout out to Rachel O'Rourke and Maru. Maru, I don't know your last name. <laughs> But it was a great event. It was amazing. Uh, two days. And it was, uh, I want to say there were probably 100 women in the room and then like four dudes. Uh, and so it was uh, super amazing. And what I uh, realized, this is a really interesting conversation for me. Um, this was maybe one of my ahas over the weekend for me personally, was um, my audience, my audience might be women. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of guys that um, I connect with, and that's awesome. I love connecting with uh, dudes in my tribe. I re- but I realize like sixty percent, maybe seventy percent of my engagement on this show and other posts that I make on social um, are from women. Um, and I think that's because I'm a I'm a guy, I'm a male who is in touch with his feminine energy. Like that's um, I speak about empathy often, authenticity. Um, creativity. I talk about holding space for people. Um, so a lot of the, not just the words I use, but the space I come from is um, a space that resonates with women. Um, and rightfully so, right? Um, doesn't mean it doesn't resonate with men. It doesn't, definitely doesn't re- resonate with all men. Um, but it is uh, definitely more, more weighted towards um, a feminine energy, if you will, um, with the kind of message that I have, right? Authenticity and marketing. You don't have to close people. You don't have to be a hardcore closer, like all that stuff. Like I don't want to be a hardcore closer. And, um, I just found, I I find that women are way more intuitive with, um, people and their emotions. Um, I'm very, I love diving deeper into my own shadows and emotions. And I find that women are more willing to go towards the, their emotions faster. Um, and so when I speak from, um, an emotional place, women pick that up faster, right? And so I realized like my, m- a lot of my engagement on social uh, comes from women. So I had a chance to speak this morning. I spoke this morning at 9.45 uh, for 30 minutes on certainty. And if you've seen some of my posts recently on certainty, um, I sort of recreated that today in the room. Um, and what was so rewarding about that was that I was delivering it to a room who was get they they got it they were getting it like they um <laughs> it was they were so supportive and so like they were just like oh yeah and like I was like it was like church right they were just giving me so much verbal feedback as I was speaking because what I was saying was landing right now take that same conversation and put it in front of uh a room full of other people, we could just, we could say guys who aren't in connected to their emotions, or we could say women who don't like to hear from men, whatever, right? Um, the wrong audience. And you could put that same message. I delivered it well. It felt really good as I was delivering it. Um, definitely felt like something was coming through me, right? But I could have done that same thing in front of the wrong audience and it wouldn't land. In fact, I did this uh, several years ago. Uh, well, a long time ago now. It feels like five, six, seven years ago. Um, I was um, out in the Midwest somewhere, and I was teaching some real estate stuff. Like I had, like at that time, I normally had taught real estate stuff, and I delivered it uh, with the same energy I delivered it in other places, and it just didn't land. Like the the room was just like, oh, I was like a wet blanket. I couldn't get any sort of feedback. Same delivery I'd done other places, um, and uh, it just didn't land right? Just didn't land. So what, here's the, here's the takeaway. I just spent, um, a couple minutes here after this event, the event just let out. I just spent a couple minutes here with one of the attendees who was just asking me a lot about like, uh, about how I just about her business and how I do what I do and things like that. And, um, I could relate to her in so many ways because she's very in her head about it all. Like, the, I need to make, I need to make this business work. I need to figure out like what I'm doing. Like there was a lot of just, um, anxious energy around really wanting to make it work. And yet at the same time, what's so interesting was she's very clear. Like when she gets up and speaks, um, cause she had, she grabbed the microphone during the event and said some things that she was getting. She's very clear when she speaks, but the part of the confusion comes when you take what you feel like you're clear about 
and you deliver it to the wrong audience, you get no validation or feedback from that audience and then you question yourself. This has killed many a dreams, right? Where you you feel that you got a download, you got some you got some divine inspiration and you're like, "Oh, this is it." And then you took that you may have even worked on it for a lot. So you felt prepared or something. And then you took that to the world and it, and you were met with crickets. You got no, no sort of external validation from people, whether the message landed or not. In fact, you could tell it did not resonate with people. It did not resonate with people. And then you took that feedback. I mean, it was feedback. It was just feedback that wasn't resonating feedback. It was feedback like, oh, that sucked. And you take that feedback and you make it, you think it had something to do with you. When in reality, the whole time, it may just have been the wrong audience. And, and in fact, I, I feel like in my own 17-year journey of business, one of the hardest things for me to do uh, or to find was my audience. Who is my audience? How do, I, how do I quantify this? How do I say this succinctly? Like, you, you know, I've done exercises where you try to create your avatar. My avatar is a... 35 year old uh, male. Oh wait, is it a female? I don't know. Which, which do I pick? Male, female? I don't know. Uh, they're in business and they are, and we go through this exercise where we keep trying to figure out who our avatar is and we're still no clear after the exercise. And so finding your audience, your target audience becomes a very, can be a very difficult thing to, to identify. But what I'm going to tell you is that unless you identify it, you're going to spend all this time having received divine inspiration, then share divine inspiration, having only not resonate with people and then think it's that, that it's something wrong with you. And then that causes you to doubt your intuition when none of that is wrong. It's just that you're putting it in front of the wrong people. And you, listen, if uh, you know you've had moments you i would guess you've had moments where you've said something to the right audience or the right person and it resonates it lands and you're like oh that felt really good and then there are other times where you put it in front of the wrong audience and you're like oh, i couldn't i couldn't tell if that was good or bad or whatever but it sure didn't it didn't feel good so here's let me see if i can't give you a couple places to look for how this might uh where you might find your tribe, right? I, I think the first principle here is that you are your own tribe. You are your own tribe. Now, I just said at the beginning of this Facebook Live that um, I'm, I am on the fence that women might be my audience and I am not a woman, right? Uh, women might be my audience and I am not a woman. Um, yet, and yet, there are things in that space that I... Uh, identify with, like I said, like my conversation is about empathy. It is about authenticity. <clears throat> it is about holding s space for people. Um, and a lot of that is feminine. It, it comes from a feminine energy, right? Um, and, and like I said, 60 to 70% of my pe people that engage with my content are women. So um, that is true to my tribe. My tribe are people oriented. They value authenticity. They want to inspire and help people, not bother and close people. Um, my audience wants to make a real connection. They want transformation for people. Um, this is my audience. And um, so as I uh, had, so I sponsored this event and that I spoke at this morning. And so when I had the opportunity to sponsor it, it made complete sense to me to invest in that opportunity because I'd be in a room in front of a hundred plus women around a conversation about showing up in life. That's totally my conversation. So this is my, this is my point. When you're clear about who you want to serve and from a, not from an, an intellectual perspective, but from a heart level, you may not even be able to explain it, but you can feel it. You can like, Oh yeah, no, there's something about this that it feels right. These are my people then you can start to find um, whether whether you're a real estate agent in marketing, you know, you're trying to do marketing, you're trying to find buyers and sellers, you can start to tailor how you speak about things using language that actually attracts those kinds of people instead of idiots and jerks, right? If you're uh, in some other kind of business, whatever business you're in, when you know who your audience is, um, oh, this is the other thing I told her too, this is so good. 
not just that you can identify opportunities that are going to be the right people, but you, but your certainty expands when you, when you deliver your divine inspiration to the right audience and it resonates the, the, it mirrors back to you that it was good and right and true. And your certainty grows. You actually feel filled up in your spirit. You feel filled up and you're like that was amazing. You're like, let's do that again. That was un- incredible. And your so- your certainty grows. And certainty is an, is a vital ingredient to not only your consistency in your marketing and your business, but to your leadership. You, people rely on you for certainty. They don't rely on you for the right answers. They're look they're looking to you. There are a lot of people in business and in life who have the right answers that do not inspire confidence in others. But when you have certainty, right answers or not. People will look to you for guidance. It is your certainty that inspires people, not your information. And so when you get clear about who you're delivering your information, your content to, and it lands and resonates and you get that feedback, your certainty grows. And that just fuels the fire of your mission and purpose here. So all of that to say, we'll wrap it here, gang. All of that to say, Do not underestimate who your audience is. You've got to get clear on that because if you're trying to be all things to all people, it won't work. You will find all sorts. In fact, your your certainty will shrink because you'll be wondering, you'll feel like you had inspiration in your soul, but you're wondering why other people don't get it. So you got to get clear about who, who you're serving. And oftentimes we serve people who are like ourselves. So... That's it. That's it, gang. That's it for today's episode of Marketing for the Rest of Us. Go get clear about who you're serving and uh, press in on the edges of that, right? Press in on the edges of who you think you're serving. Like get wild and crazy with it for a minute and just think like outside the box of what you've normally been thinking about who you serve. Try something new. Try Just do something random. Like for me to say, uh, or not just random, but do but swing for the edges. For me to say that women might be my audience for me right now in this moment feels risky in the sense that I don't, uh, I don't want to alienate guys because I like guys who are uh, emotionally intelligent and all that. Um, but there's something about like, uh, there's something about, I can't shake it right now. There's something about women, not just, and it's not just women uh, in that they are receptive to the message, but also when I think about a real groundswell in the world, what's going to create a real groundswell in the world? I think there needs to be a rise in feminine energy. Um, there, our whole world has expanded through masculine energy. Um, and I think that there needs to be a rise of feminine energy to match and harmonize with all of that masculine. And if, so if I really want to make a groundswell in the world, I really, if, I really do believe that there is a rising of feminine energy that needs to happen in order for that groundswell to happen. And that's challenging for me, right? Because now I'm looking at like, poof, like I need to go, like I might need to go all in on market, my marketing and my my services to women because I may be I may be able to help bridge that gap between masculine and feminine. As a male who's in touch with his feminine energy, I I may need to go that direction. Uh, we'll see. But that's an example of me swinging for the edges in who my audience might be. I hadn't considered that before. I'm considering it now. It, in some ways, it feels very true, and in some ways, it feels risky, and that might be a good sign. Might be a good sign. Anyway, here's my, so my advice to you, go, uh, go, uh, explore the edges of who your audience might be. It's most likely going to be, um, uh, similar to who you are in some form or another. And, uh, that's going to create a lot of clarity and certainty for you as you go down that road. Thanks for hanging out with me for just a little bit until tomorrow when I see you again for another episode of marketing for the rest of us. Have a great day.